I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters will be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening and the heading of this teaching, Murderers of Israel. Murderers of Israel. My brothers and sisters, as we very well know, there's a lot of us that like to go and do things our own way. And that's hardly not the case here in Scripture or with God. Murderers of Israel. So we know a lot of these so-called pastors and ministers in these prison houses, these are the murderers of our people. They tend to teach the things that they want to teach. They lean to their own understanding. And as you very well know, they go their own way and looking out for their own gain. Murderers of Israel. So my brothers and sisters, we're going to go through scripture and see what thus says the Most High God about these murderers and of Israel. So without further ado, I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper. And as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. Murderers of Israel. So we'll start right here at Numbers. Numbers 35 and 31. And it's recorded. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. Exactly the point. So we see clearly this is not going to go well with these so-called pastors, these so-called murderers. From here, let's go to Matthew for some information. Matthew chapter 26, and we'll go right here to verse 66. And it's recorded. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. From here, let's go to John. John chapter 10, and let's hit verse 33. And it's recorded. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, that thou, being a man, maketh thyself Yahweh, which is clearly these Pharisees and Sadducees got it all wrong. So let's take a look at something real quick. Let's go from here to John chapter 5. In verse 18, let's pull some information. And it's recorded. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Yahweh was his father, making himself equal with Yahweh. So that's clearly not correct, because according to Scripture, we know that the Spirit and the Father are one. So they thought that he had broken the Sabbath, but what he did, he healed on the Sabbath. So just like a lot of these Pharisees today, they always get it wrong. So let's go from here back to John 10. And let's go to verse 30. And it's recorded, I and my father are one. So this is why they thought that he was equal to himself with the father. What he don't know is the spirit of the most high God. So from here, let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 24. And let's hit verses 16 and 17. And it's recorded. And he that blasphemeth the name, the way of the Spirit of God, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land. When he blasphemeth the name, the way of the Spirit of God shall be put to death. Verse 17. 
and he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. So we see clearly that these things are recorded in the law of the Most High God. And we have to understand that if we're not teaching God's people according to what's commanded of us and the instruction given us according to his word, this will be our fate. So if there's any Christian pastors that's here, you need to clearly pay attention <clears throat> because this word has to be in you. And if this word is not in you and you've placed yourself in a teacher's position and not speaking according to the ways of God, you're going to have a problem with the Most High God. I can guarantee it. So from here, let's go to Exodus chapter 21 and verse 12. And it's recorded. He that smiteth man so that he die shall surely be put to death. So if we're not understanding what's going on here, if you're teaching incorrectly, you're putting to death the Most High God's people. See, it's all according to the Spirit. Everything in Scripture is Spirit. But God shows us physically those things so we can understand them spiritually. We have to keep these things in mind as we go through Scripture. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, and let's hit verses 15. And it's recorded, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head, and the prophets that teaches lies, he is the tail. Exactly the point. For me, let's go to Micah and pull some information. Micah chapter 3, at verse 5. And it's recorded. Thus saith the Spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put him not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. So the Most High God is not playing with us, my brothers and sisters. If you've placed yourself in a teacher's position, you had better make sure one thing, you're teaching according to the word of God and nothing less. Because if you're teaching that it's okay to eat pork chops and you can carry blood into the temple of God, you're clearly teaching an error. You're clearly not called by the most high God. You're going according to your own way. That's not according to God. That's to the left side of the plumb line. From here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 13. And it's recorded. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Exactly the point. They do it every Sunday. They do it on Wednesday or whenever they open the doors of that prison house, they're committing murder. So from here, let's go to verse 32. Jeremiah 23, 32, and it's recorded. Behold, remember, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Spirit of God, and to tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Spirit of God. So we clearly see that these men and these women that call themselves teachers of God are not going to profit God's people at all. It's so important that we have the 1611 
King James Bible because that's all 81 books. So if you if you're going about with 66 books, you you're missing 14. Okay, so we you need to look into getting you a King James Bible 1611. Okay, keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 2, and it's recorded. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, for this reason, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Exactly the point. See, we have to understand that there is only one shepherd. One. There's not several uh, more shepherds. There's only one shepherd. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah 23, verse 14. And it's recorded. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that, done, that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. So if the Most High God <clears throat> is telling this, then we have to understand, you, if you understand what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah, then this is not a good look if you're going to continue this path teaching God's people wrong. See, the thing that you guys are doing, you're in error. If there's any Christian pastors here, you are teaching in error. First of all, if you're going into a building, that's sin. We have to understand what's going on. The scripture says the most high God dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So why, why is it that we're constantly going against the scripture and teaching things according to our way and trying to make scripture fit what it is that our thought pattern is? That's not going to work. It has to be according to the ways of God and not to the ways of your flesh. So let's read this text again. I have seen also and the prophets of Jerusalem, an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. That's not good. From here, let's go to Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 22. And it's recorded, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. And that's what you guys do. You teach hypocrisy. You, you, you're in hypocrisy. You're teaching lies to our people, saying it's okay to eat pork. All you have to do is ask God to bless it. No, that's not the truth. Because God told you about that, did he not? Let's pivot just for a minute. We'll take a look, see. Leviticus, chapter 11, and we'll hit verses 7 and 8. And it's recorded. And the swine, though he divideth the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Verse 8. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean. What is it about this text that you guys don't understand? Let's continue this pivot. Let's, let's go to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to hit verse 14, 
and we'll read down. And let's get some understanding. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leave the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Verse 16. And answered, and answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Clearly they didn't understand it. And it's recorded and it says, And Yahweh I said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast into the draught, which is the toilet. Verse 18, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Verse 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20, These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Exactly the point. God clearly commanded you not to eat pork. So just as we have learned here at KJBU, we clearly know that anything that you eat, it's impossible that it can defile you. Because again, it goes to the belly and right out into the draught. But you, you clearly don't understand scripture if you're constantly preaching that you could eat it. Why is that? Let me show you something. Let's go to Genesis. Three and sixteen, and it's recorded. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. We clearly miss it. Our desire should be to our husband. If the Spirit of God dwells in you, then you're in the bride's position to the Most High God, him being the husband. So if his desire is for you not to eat pork, then that should be your desire not to eat it. You missed it. Let's build on that just a little bit more. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 7. And we'll let verses 1 and 2, and it's recorded. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, and how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Verse 2, for the woman, which hath an husband, is bound by the law of her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Are you with me? So I don't see the most high God dying. I don't see that. So if you're here and the scripture tells you not to eat pork, that's in the law. That's God's law. Then if your desire is to the most high God, then you shouldn't, you, you are not going to be eating it. Why? Again, Jeremiah 3, 15, 14, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Turn on backside and children serve the Spirit of God. For I am married unto you. So if he's married unto us and his desire is for us not to eat it, then we being in the bride's position, then we should follow the desires of our husband. So if you're constantly teaching an error, then the Most High is a special place for you. If you don't get it right. So from here, let's go back on our teaching. Let's go back to uh, Jeremiah 23 and 14. And it's recorded. And I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and, Gom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. So let's go to uh, 
Ezekiel 13 and 22. And we'll reiterate this text as well. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Only the Most High God can do that. You need to be promised life. You have to come to the right side of the plumb line and kill off that flesh and get rid of that pork. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15. And it's recorded. And the ancient and the honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. From here, let's go back to Micah. Micah chapter 3, verse 5. Thus saith the Spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put him not into their mouth, they even prepare war against them. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. I know I read, read a lot of those texts over my brothers and sisters. Excuse me for that. Isaiah 9 and 16. And it's recorded. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. And it's recorded. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead these, lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Exactly the point. Because we want to go our own way and do our own thing. We can't do it like that, my brothers and sisters. For men, let's go to First John. First John, chapter three, verse fifteen, and it's recorded. Whoso, hath his, whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and he know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. From here, let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5, and we'll hit verses 21 and 22, and it's recorded. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. So we clearly see that this is serious business that we're dealing with, because the Most High is not going to gonna allow you to go unpunished for misleading his, his flock. That's not going to go, you're not going to go unpunished for that. Verse 22, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother, with a cause, without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoso ever shall say to his brother Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Raka. Vain fellow. Let's get some understanding. Let's go to Second Samuel and pour some information. Second Samuel chapter six, and we'll hit verse twenty.
and is regarded. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in his eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, Raka, shamelessly uncovered himself. So from here, let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 21, and we'll hit verse 8. And it's recorded. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake with bur which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It's clear in Bible, my brothers and sisters, we have to get it right. If we're continuously teaching our people incorrectly, you are going to be held 100% accountable for every soul that dies up under your doctrine. I'm just pausing so you could so that could sink into you because you really need to think on these things. So for me, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter seven, verse fifteen. And it's recorded. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly are ravening wolves, exactly the point. From here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5, and we'll hit verses 31 and 30. I'm sorry, verse 30 and 31, and it's recorded. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love it to have it so. And what will they do in the end thereof? Exactly the point. That's a question. What are you going to do in the end thereof if you hold to the doctrine of men and not to the doctrine of God? So from here, let's go back to Micah. Pull some information. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. Providing, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Jeremiah, twenty three, twenty six, and twenty seven will hit. And it's recorded. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which think of which think to cause my people to forget my way, my name, by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my way, my name for Baal. You don't think the most high going gonna hook you up for that? You don't want a visitation from the Most High God. Anybody here that knows anything about the truth of God's word will tell you, you do not want a visitation from the Most High God. We have to understand one thing, my brothers and sisters. We have a problem with the most powerfulest thing known to man, and that's the Most High God. All we have to do is humble ourselves and listen and learn. 
but where we're in it for a totally different reason than what we should be in it for, that's going to cause problems for us. Because the addiction of the flesh that we're in, and a lot of us are so addicted to it that we can't separate from it. That's a hard pill to swallow, but it's a fact. We've become so indoctrinated with the things around us and the things of this world that it's going to cause us our own life, our own soul, our own salvation. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 8. And it's recorded. The priest said not, where is the Spirit of God? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after the things that do not profit. Exactly the point. That completed the section of this teaching, murderers. So let's go to another part of this teaching I like to call how they murder and kill. How they murder and kill. So let's go to Psalms, chapter 10, verse 1, and we'll read down to 3, and it's recorded. Why standest thou afar off, O Spirit of God? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doeth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Spirit of God abhorred. So let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. And it's recorded. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. Exactly the point. It's about uh, getting his own game, getting into your pocket. It's about you buying that Lamborghini that he's been eyeballing. It's about putting that burden on you, telling you that the light bill in the church need to be paid. He's going to put that on you. For a minute, let's go to Proverbs 6. In chapter, th uh, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Into some 31. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, and he shall give all the substance of his house. Watch this. But whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 7. And it's recorded. All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. <laughs> let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 16. And we'll read from 26 down to 30. And it's recorded. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. Exactly the point. A fraudwood man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Verse 29, a violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him in the way that is not good. Exactly the point. 
Y'all got a church home? You belong to a church? You can come over to our church. Come on over there and hear this truth. I know a lot of us have heard that. Come on, man, we worship God every Sunday and Sunday evening. I know we've heard that. We've all done it. We've all probably have invited a lot of our brothers and sisters. So we don't want to act like we don't know, but there's a lot of our brothers and sisters still caught in that well. So we can only try to encourage them and to continue to speak truth to them. And hopefully that will prick their heart and they will come to the truth. So verse 30. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. So let's go back to Psalms 10. Psalms chapter 10. And we'll hit verses 4 through 7. As recorded. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh. Yahweh is not in all his thoughts exactly the point. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He that said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Adversity. Verse 7, his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Exactly the point. Why? Because he's just lying. Not even speaking the truth. That's why it's so important for us to continue to search the scriptures for the truth. We have to show ourselves approved unto the Most High God, my brothers and sisters. We have to continue to study, show ourselves approved, and to give that tenth unto him. We have to keep these things in mind. So from here, let's go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 14, and we'll hit read on down to 19. And it's recorded. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are their, their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear, no desire of Yahweh before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before Yahweh. From here, let's go back to Psalms. Psalms chapter 10 and verse 8. And this is where they do their business. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places. You know them as churches. Doth he murder the innocent? His understanding, his eyes are privately set against the poor. Exactly the point. See, we have to understand some of our brothers and sisters. If you're knocking knowledge of the word of God, not only are you referred to as the poor, but a lot of these pastors in these church buildings know that they could easily misguide you as well. See, all you have to do is not be reading, and you're dependent on them to give you the truth of God's word. And if that's so, and you're not reading and studying as you should, then you're going to be an easy prey for these, these guys. That's why it's so important for you to read and study and search the, the scriptures for yourself and watch who you are learning from. See, because tithes and offers have never been money. So if you're paying tithes into this building, then you're, you're being deceived. 
you're being ripped off of your money. We have to understand God shows us everything in, in his word, those things to be, be warned of. And not only that, but it also shows us other things that we have to do to get back right with our God. See, we just can't put all of the blame on these guys because we hold a lot of responsibility ourselves. Because instead of us reading and studying as we should, we go up in the building and, and depend on these guys. So if you're not going to obey the word of God, and if you're not going to read and study as you should, then you're going to easily be misled, and you're going to be behind this guy going into the lake of fire if you don't get this right. One thing's for certain here at KJBU, we sugarcoat nothing. We're only trying to show you the things that you need to, you need to do in order to to get back right with the Most High God. We've committed quite a bit of sin against our God. And we have to get this right. And going into this building, that's pushing you further into the abyss. It separates you further and further from the Most High God. The objective is to come to, to God and to confess those sins that we've done and turn and do the things meant for repentance. So let's reiterate this text. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doeth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. From here, let's go to Psalms, chapter 17, verse 12. And it's recorded, Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were young, a young liar lurking in the secret places. Exactly the point. Psalms 11 and verse 2. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, this bow is those elders. We have, to, we have to keep our focus. These guys mean us no good if we're constantly following after them and we're not reading and studying the Word of God. That's why they make merchandise of us. Let's go back to Psalms, chapter 10, verse 9, and it's recorded. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. Exactly the point. He doeth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net, into his deceit, into his snare, into his lies. From here, let's go to Micah. Micah chapter 7. And right here at verse 2, and it's recorded, The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood, for life. They hunt every man his brother with a net, with deception, with deceit. We have to be careful of this, my brothers and sisters. We have to be mindful of what's going on. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5. And we're at verses 26 through 28. And it's recorded. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap that they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Exactly the point. It's just filled with that. Because you're in that cage, you're in that 
temple. You're in that prison. And they pull you in there by the deception and the lies that they tell you Sunday after Sunday. Unlearned men shouldn't even have the book of, of the Most High God in their hand because they're dealing deceitfully. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Verse 28, they are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not teach. Why? Because it's, it's not about them. It's not about the people, it's about them. We have to wake up, my brothers and sisters. Wake up. So if marriage go back to Psalms, chapter 10, verse 4. Did I, yeah. Wait a minute. Give me a minute, my brothers and sisters. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not going back over my my lesson here. Okay, so what was that nine? So from here, let's go to Psalms ninety four. And we'll hit verses three through seven. And it's recorded. Spirit of God, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Verse 5, they break in pieces thy people, O Spirit of God, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Spirit of God shall not see, neither shall the Yahweh of the God of Jacob regard it. If they really think that within themselves, they're sadly mistaken. They haven't a clue of the Most High God at all. The Most High God sees everything. From here, let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 6 and in verse 9 as recorded. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. Exactly the point. From here let's go to Hosea 7 and 1 and it's recorded. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. So all they need is that opening. All they need is that opening. And once they get that opening, they know you're not reading. They see clearly that you're not, uh, that you're not, that you're dependent upon them. They can misguide you big time. That's why they do what they do. For me, let's go to Job. Job chapter 19, verse 12. And it's recorded. His troops come together and raise up their way against me and encamp round about my tabernacle. For me, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 12. And it's recorded. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients, the elders of the house of Israel, 
do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imaginary, for his imagery, I'm sorry, for they say the Spirit of God seeth us not, and the Spirit of God hath forsaken the earth. So they think. For me, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. And it's recorded. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Spirit of God, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? We'll reiterate this one verse. First John chapter 3 verse 15 Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Exactly the point. So my brothers and sisters we'll go to this last section that I would like to call deny Christ and desire the murderer. My brothers and sisters, we know that a lot of us deny the ways of God because we want to have it our way. And it's kind of unfortunate because we truly do ourselves a disservice and shortchanging ourselves from the truth of God's word. A lot of us, a lot of our brothers and sisters, believe it or not, take this walk not serious at all. And that's the unfortunate part for them because they haven't the slightest idea how important this walk is because their life is on the line. We have to get out of that mindset of thinking we could live a fleshly life and inherit the kingdom of God in the end. We have to get out of that mindset. It's important that we get out of that mindset. So let's go from here, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter three, verse 14. And it's recorded. But ye deny the Holy One and the just and desired the murderer to be granted unto you. Denied the Holy One. So from here, let's go to Acts, chapter 7, and we'll have verses 52. And it's recorded. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the portrayers and murderers. Exactly the point. Following out thy own heart. Following out thy own way. We like to have it so, don't we? See, if we're going to follow out thy own way and we're not going to pay attention to what the truth is, you might as well enjoy your life now while you're here, if that's your mindset because it only gets worse after that. Understand what's being said here. If you're gonna to hold to the left side of the plumb line, it can only get worse for you when that flesh you ain't expire. For me, let's go to Acts 5 and 28. Acts 5 and 28 as recorded, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this, in this way, in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Let us go to James. James chapter 5, verse 6. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doeth not resist you. From here, let's go to James 4 and 2. 
and we'll read from 2 to 2 4. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye not, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, is hated. Whosoever, therefore, for this reason will be a friend of the world is an enemy to God, exactly the point. So if you're going to hold to the left side of the plumb line, understand that you are an enemy to the Most High God. Let's pivot just for a minute. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. And I said 15, to read down a couple of verses as recorded. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Exactly the point. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that, it, that doeth the will of the Most High God abideth forever. So we need to kill that flesh. It's, it's, it never changes, my brothers and sisters. That flesh has to, has to die. So from here, the desires of the murderer. Let's go to Luke, pull some information. Luke chapter 23. And we wind down this teaching. 17 through 19. And it's recorded. For of the necessity, he must release one to them at the feast. And they cried out, all at once, saying, Away with this man, release unto us Barabbas. Watch this. Who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. We want the murderer. We like that guy that got that nice suit on and that, that fake gold watch. We like that guy. And it got on them big, supposedly gold rings that turn your hand all green. We want that doctrine. We'll deny the Holy One. And, you know, we want that. Are you with me? Let's pivot just for a minute. Let's go, go to Romans. Romans 9 and 6. And it's recorded. Not as though the word of Yahweh had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Exactly the point. You know why? Because a lot of us are not going to receive the truth. A lot of us are going to reject the truth. So why is it that we're, we're dying? Why is it that we're dying? Because we're doing absolutely nothing to sustain the life of Christ in us. The whole purpose is to receive the word of God, to receive the spirit of God, to receive life. That's what gives you life. So if you're going to receive life again, you have to give up this life that you currently live for the life of Christ. That's how this works. It don't work no other way. It don't work the way you want it to work. That's why all of this is recorded in the word of God. It's for our learning. It's to show us the things that we have done towards our God. And it also shows us the things that we need to do to get back right with our God. And it warns us of the murderers, these so-called pastors and frogs that are in these church buildings that can mislead and, de and, and deceive you. 
We have all of this in the Word of God. But if we're not going to humble ourselves and learn and find out what the truth is, then we only do ourselves a disservice. So from there, let's go back to Luke. Luke chapter 23, and we'll hit verse 25. And it's recorded. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they desired. <laughs> exactly the point. We want that guy to teach us this doctrine. He's not going to teach you the doctrine of the Most High God. He's going to give you the doctrine and commandments of man. That's the whole purpose that you need to separate from that. That's of the world. That's not of God. But he delivered Yahushai to their will. From here, let's go to John. Chapter 19 and 16. And it's recorded. Then delivered he him, therefore unto them, to be crucified. And they took Yahweh and led him away. Exactly the point. Why? Because they didn't want to hear what he was talking about. They wanted the murderer. They wanted the murderer. So, if there are any Christian pastors here, my question to you, how did Christ die? That's my question to you. I want you to chew on that for a while, and I want you to come up with what, how you think Christ died according to Scripture. Because, see, the reason that I ask you that is for a reason. And here's the reason that I ask. Let's pivot just for a minute. Let's go to Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. And it says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Spirit of God of hosts. That's why I ask you that. I know you can't answer it, but I thought I asked you anyway. Because when your focus is more on your on your gain than on Speaking the truth of God's word, these are a lot of the problems, or just this is just one of the problems that you'll have a problem with amongst a lot of others. Why? Because you are unlearned in Scripture. From here, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 27. Verse 26. And it's recorded. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when they had scourged Yahushai, he delivered him up. He delivered him to be crucified. Let's go back to Acts 3 and 15. And it's recorded. And kill the prince of life, whom Yahweh hath raised from the dead. Wherefore, we are witnesses. And we'll pull this last couple of texts, my brothers and sisters. And that's it. First John, chapter five, and we're at verses eleven and twelve, and it's recorded. And this is the record that Yahweh hath given us, given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son, is in his servant. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of Yahweh hath not life. So my brothers and sisters, I know I wasn't with you long this evening, but I was led to bring about this teaching and I hope it edifies a lot of you and I hope it I hope my prayers that it hope helps a lot of you on your journey. 
And as we very well know, my brothers and sisters, we have to stay connected to the Word of God. We can't allow anyone to pull us away from the Word. We have to receive our own daily. We have to till the ground from whence we've come to make sure that there is nothing in that field but the seed and the Word of God. And we have to continually water that seed, search out the scriptures for the truth of God's Word, and to continue on this journey and to make ready this body, this temple for the Spirit. So as always, never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's Word. Continue to receive your Oma and to till your ground from whence you've come. And until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.